Hi, this is Greg Jones, your Sidel Tech, and uh, glad you're tuning in to today's video. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to disassemble and reassemble a uh, Sidel uh, Saxony chromatic. Now, this video is going to be a little unique uh, because uh, what we're actually going to do in this video is exchange uh, the comb, the aluminum comb, uh, for an acrylic comb. Now you may be asking why uh, we would do that, and uh, I will grant you that it's not a real common uh, request. The Saddell Saxony, which uh, as I said comes with a milled aluminum comb, is a very quality chromatic, and the comb that comes with it is extremely quality as well. Uh, in fact, it's very, very, very popular. Uh, but there are a few reasons, occasionally there are reasons why players want to exchange out the comb. The acrylic comb is very well made, as well, uh, and uh, these combs are interchangeable, uh, but they are a little lighter weight, uh, and that does uh, affect it. There's, so that is an advantage of the acrylic comb. Also, to some extent, I guess you might call them translucent, or at least you can see inside, and that does allow uh, some benefit too as well. And lastly, and this is very rare, but occasionally, um, there will be a reaction with the player's breath and the um, and the comb, the aluminum comb. Very rare, and when that does happen, is extremely minimal, uh, and it's not something most people would even notice. But for some people, they just prefer to have the acrylic comb, but they like the uh, other mechanical functions and the playability, the mouthpiece assembly of the Saddle Saxony. So what we're going to do today is we're going to uh, disassemble this completely, uh, the Saxony, and we're going to install this. Uh, this blue comb. So I'm going to adjust the camera. I'm going to pull this uh, mouthpiece and slide off. Just pull this out, pull the mouthpiece screws out. Before I reassemble this, I am going to uh, clean these parts. Uh, they look to be in really good shape, actually, but I'm going to go ahead and clean them just for the customer. I usually soak them, so I'll demonstrate that. So here we have all the parts, the H-bar, slide, mouthpiece, and what, what I call the rail. Set those here. Now what we're going to do is a handy little tip here. When you take that mouthpiece off, and I, I don't advise that you take the mouthpiece off unless uh, unless you're confident you can get it back on. It can be a little tricky, and so I don't advise you to do that unless you, you, you know for sure that you can get it back on. But one advantage of taking the mouthpiece off is it gives you visual access to all the valves. And this is a really good way to diagnose problems. You can see all the valves in there. In this case, all those valves are sitting uh, sitting flat up against the plate uh, in great shape. None of them are curled, none of them are lodged in the slot, uh, and they all appear to be straight. So we know that this uh, that these are fine. Uh, so that's just a it's a quick little tip. Uh, one more thing, I'm using a uh, I'm using in this particular model. I'm using a Phillips head screwdriver. there. Some of these we'll use Posi, what we call Posi, and some we'll use Phillips. We're transitioning more and more towards Phillips. So I have the covers off. And when you set your uh, chromatic down without the covers, make sure these braces, these cover braces are on because that'll keep it elevated and keep uh, Keep it from damaging the valves or mashing them down. So now I have these covers off. These covers look to be in really good shape, but I'm going to go ahead and clean those as well. All right, so now what I'll need to do is take off uh, all the remaining inside hardware. And uh, you can use um, either a Phillips head on these or you can use a Posi. In this case, I'm just going to use a Phillips head. Uh, 
Posi will work, but a Phillips head works just fine on these. Now you want to be careful at this stage right here because this spring is held in by this post. And as soon as I lift this comb up, if that spring moves, it's going to fly out. So you just want to be really, really careful at this point and just know that that's about to happen. Uh, spring is under a little bit of tension. So just be, just be really careful. It's not going to hurt anything, just uh, you may lose the spring. And the spring is still in there right now, uh, fortunately. And I've got that spring out. But people lose them all the time. They go flying and they can't find it. Or they find it at the bottom of their foot. Anyhow, so here we have the uh, the reed plate. It has been removed. It looks to be in really good shape. So I'm going to set that down over here. And I'm just going to be really careful when I set it down. So that I don't damage reeds or, uh, reeds or valves. And I just want to be careful about that. Still need to pull off the bottom plate. Once again, I'm using Phillips head. Uh, you can use small Phillips or medium. Some of the screws take small, some take medium. The small usually works for all of them. But I like to keep things, I like to protect these screws as much as I can. And I have this reed plate as well. You can see. Uh, valves are all straight, laying flat. I've actually revalved this particular one previously. And here, here's the comb. Very well made comb, very popular, hugely popular, very qual uh, high quality precision made aluminum uh, comb. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean these parts. Uh, they're in really good shape, actually look to be very clean, but there's nothing wrong with going ahead and doing that uh, while I have it all taken apart. And I use a, a foaming cleanser that will kind of remove saliva and gunk and mineral deposits and stuff like that. It's water soluble and I'll show you that here. CLR, it's a bathroom cleanser, but really this is uh, very minimal. I mean, you can use straight soap and water is fine. Uh, 409 Windex, you could even use a little vinegar. Just want to make sure whatever you use is water soluble and that when you get done, you um, you rinse them out really well. You soak those parts in water and get them, get them really clean, get all the uh, soap or cleaner off of them. This, like I said, is a foaming cleanser. Might be able to hear it. Kind of going to work. So I'm going to let these sit for a little bit and I'll return shortly. Well, I finished with the parts and uh, they came out nice and clean. And I'm just going to let them, uh, let the parts sit here and dry for a little bit. And uh, while I'm doing that, I'm going to work on mounting uh, the reed plates onto the comb. So I have a special uh, tray here. You don't have to have this necessarily, but this is something I had custom made. And the uh, chromatic, set of chromatic combs will fit in there. And this is just something I have with a hollow back there. And that's to keep, to protect the back end, to you know, protect the underneath uh, of the reed plate. So anyhow, so what we're going to do is we're going to install the top, top reed plate. You want to be careful when you, uh, whenever you do this, regardless of how you're doing it. But you just want to make sure that when you when you set this thing, that you're not clipping valves on the inside there. I've done it a bunch over the years. So we have that set, sitting there, and Saddle has these really neat small uh, set screws that allow partial disassembly of chromatic, and so. I'm going to put those, put that one in first. And that puts this in place. And I'm going to do another check to make sure none of the valves have been damaged. And then I'm going to put the center post screw in. That'll help this thing stay together. I'm 
Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to flip this the other way around. So it's all, it's all together. I'm going to set it down here. Once again, if you don't have, uh, if you don't have a tray like this, I'm, I'm pretty sure most of you won't. Uh, something I had custom made. Uh, but uh, if you don't, uh, just be real careful when you set things down. If you set it down uh, with that post in there, then you'll protect the the valves and the reeds. So I'm gonna install. I think what I'm gonna do first. I'm gonna put that center post. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the spring. And the saddle spring goes in on, on the Deluxe. The Deluxe steel and the Saxony all pretty much goes in the same way. So, it's, so you want to hold this plate down a little bit. That's one option. Or the other side to that is you can also put a screw, the set screw, one of the plate screws in there, but you just want to hold that, that end of the plate needs to uh, be secure so the spring doesn't pop out between the blade, uh, the cone, and the uh, plate. And then what you're going to do is you're going to just compress that spring a little bit and kind of get it in. It's a little sharp, kind of hard on the fingers, but you can figure it out. And then, uh, unlike some chromatics, uh, Saddle has a slightly different design. They use actually a screw uh, as the center pin for that uh, for that spring. So we have a screw uh, that goes through uh, the plate, the comb, and then tap, screws into the bottom side of the plate. So now that screw, uh, now that spring there is set, set tight. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna check our uh, valves again one more time. You can't do that too many times. Make sure that nothing's been clipped or damaged in the process. It looks pretty good. And I'm going to set it back down on my, uh, in my little tray there. And I'm going to go ahead and install the reed plate screws. And while I do that, I'll speed up the video. Now the set screws or plate screws have all been installed. And it looks like all the other... All the other screws are in there as well. So now we're ready to go to the next step. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna try, this doesn't always uh, work. Sometimes you have to play around a little bit, but what I'm gonna try and do is put the cover, uh, the cover plates on. I like to get those on as soon as possible because when the cover plates are on, it protects these, um, protects the other parts. So I wanna make sure these are good and dry here. Using these little barrel screws can be tricky. Just want to make sure you don't strip anything when you do it. Okay, so now the harmonica uh, is going to be a little safer to handle because I've got the delicate parts that are covered. So the next stage is going to be the installation of the mouth, uh, the mouthpiece and slide assembly. And get those dried off. You really don't want to put wet parts onto your uh, chromatic, and the reason is. Uh, that water will drip down onto the valves 
sometimes it'll dry out, but sometimes it'll cause them to curl or uh, cause cause it to malfunction for a short while until it gets completely dried out. So just make sure you're putting dry parts on. And this part can be tricky. So the first part here, I call this the H bar. And uh, that's because from the side angle, it looks like an H. Now, here's the thing on the H bar. This can be tricky and a lot of people mess this up. This H bar has to sit, has to sit in these little grooves of the, uh, in the grooves of the reed plate. And sometimes it just doesn't quite fit down in there for a variety of reasons. So you just want to make sure uh, if it's not sitting on there, it's not, it's not going to play right. It's not going to tighten down right. It's not going to play right. You may even strip it. So just make sure the edges of the H bar are on the grooves of the reed plate. So, and if it doesn't, uh, if it doesn't work and you absolutely can't get it, you need to contact me and we can talk about uh, what the problem could be. But in, most of the time you should be able to do it. One option though, if it doesn't work, you can loosen these cover plates and move them back a little bit. Just make sure they're not interfering. But in this case, you can see that it, it fits fine. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky. I use the step method, is what I call it, the step method uh, to uh, get this back together. Because you're going to say, hey, I don't have the hands uh, to hold all the parts. And you're right, you don't. So we stair step it. So what it is, you get that mouthpiece or that slide in there. And I, I like to play with that slide a little bit just to make sure it's working. The next part, I'm going to put in this couple different names for it. In this case, I'm going to call it the rail. I don't know if it really is, but a rail, but that's what I'm going to call it. You get that rail in there and then you're going to put the mouthpiece. Make sure, notice this mouthpiece has a groove in it. Okay. And that groove right there is where the, uh, the spring goes through. So if you get it backwards, the spring's going to be stuck. So make sure it's not, make sure it's in there like that. And then secondly, you notice there's a little bit of an arc. I get a lot of beginning players, newbie players, that uh, take it apart and then straighten this out and proudly write me how they hammered it out and straightened it. It was a malfunction. It's not a malfunction. It's a, uh, that, that curve is in there for a purpose. Okay, so uh, how much of a curve needs to be there? Well, that's another story. Um, but the curve is there uh, for a reason. So what I'm going to do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to line up these holes. And here's what I do. I will... Put it in, just put one screw in, just like that. And you can do this at any stage, but it can be a little. Okay, so it's going to give me a little bit of trouble right there. There we go. So I always do it on this end. And if I can't get it in, and I may have a little bit of trouble there. Okay, so it's going to give me a little bit of trouble. That's fine. No big deal. I'm smarter. And this chromatic, at least I think I am. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to do, just put put it in, line it up right here. Just, I say I'm going to. It's always something. So I'm going to pull it out. Okay, we're going to start all over here. See the hole there? It's a little hard to find on these acrylic. Just make sure everything sits down there right. Okay, there's the hole. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to screw this in just like this. Good, right there. Good. So that goes in. I'm going to keep holding it in just like that. What I'm going to do is pull that screw back out. I'm going to put this mouthpiece, or slide, excuse me. Thread that through the uh, groove there. Put these in there and line up these holes. And now what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this screw in here 
without the mouthpiece on. Let me get it down in there. You don't have to go very tight. I'm just doing this to hold this stuff together because I don't really have enough hands. Okay, so now you see I've got it there. Now what I can do is take this mouthpiece on the other side, take the other screw, put it in, Now that I have that in there, I can take this screw back out. For the most part, everything will stay together because it's being held together on the other end. I'll put it in again. There you have it. Really smooth slide action. Beautiful harmonica Saxony with the blue acrylic comb. Looks really great. What you want to do uh, when you do this too though is you want to try and you want to hold these up to light. I'll hold this mouthpiece and slide assembly up to light. See if you have light uh, going through there. And the reason is you don't want that because if you see light going through there you have air. So you want to get this these screws tightened down as much as you can without uh, without affecting the slide function. And I've got them really cinched down really well. And I'll tell you what, the slide is really working well. So this is gonna be, I'm going a little further. Still have good slide function. So you don't wanna strip anything out, but obviously the tighter you get it, the better. And there you have it. Uh, thank you for tuning in to today's video. I'm Greg Jones. If uh, you have any questions, uh, comment below. And as always, uh, if you like this video, like it, hit the like button, uh, subscribe, uh, share it, and uh, comment below. And obviously, I would like you to visit my website, 1623customharmonicas.com. Uh, thank you for tuning in. I'm Greg Jones.